This presentation will be uh, given by myself, uh, the introduction, uh, followed by a more detailed discussion of the technical matters by uh, my colleagues Arindam Sadhu and Asmita Benerjee. The uh, problem we studied in this uh, project is uh, the following. How does one optimize the schedules of nurses and physicians who are working in uh, clinics dealing with COVID-19 cases? Uh, there are added constraints uh, that have to be accounted for, uh, given the uh, rapid, the rapidness with which uh, the coronavirus that causes COVID-19 spreads. Um, so time constraints and uh, work environment uh, constraints have to be accounted for. Uh, when these uh, constraints are put together and accounted for, you get a problem which is uh, NP hard, and uh, we use quantum annealing hardware uh, to study how to actually solve this uh, in an optimal way. The flow of work is going to be as follows. Uh, there will be a discussion of constraints that we considered in this problem. Uh, the, the objective function uh, that was formatted in the icing uh, model, in the, shape, the form of the icing model, and the Kubo model for the NSP, which stands for the nurse scheduling problem, and the PSP, which stands for the physician scheduling problem. Uh, we will consider and look at the uh, optimization of the scheduling uh, using quantum annealing for both these problems. Uh, and finally, we'll consider the NPSP uh, problem, which is essentially a combination of the two individual problems. Uh, namely, this would be the nurse physician scheduling problem. Uh, this is where we consider how to uh, bring together nurses and physicians in a clinic uh, such that the constraints uh, that minimize the, the, um, the, the possible spread of COVID-19 among the nurse uh, and nurses and physicians. Uh, so we would like to minimize that. So uh, we will study how to optimize that situation using quantum annealing hardware. The constraints uh, that we will consider, and uh, my colleagues will talk more about this right after the slide, uh, are the maximum number of shifts that each um, staff member, be it a nurse or a physician, can work per day. So th this is to ensure that the staff member can take sufficient amount of rest in between shifts. Um, constraint number two would be each staff member can do at most two consecutive shifts. And constraint number three is the maximum number of staff members <clears throat> that can be present during a given shift uh, in order to maintain uh, distancing between the individuals. Now I pass it on to my colleagues to give more details, uh, technical details. Now we will discuss about Hamiltonian formulation with our constraint as previously mentioned by our colleague. Now you, we know that the best practice to solve any combinatorial optimization problem on a quantum annealer is to formulate the cubo first, and then it can be easily converted or transformed into respective easing formulation to get the global minima in this global minima. In this project, we also do this, we also follow the same. Now, cubo formulation with our first constraint is presented in equation one. In our cubo format, set of nurses small n is belongs to one to capital N are assigned to complete a set of working shift small s, which is also belongs to one to capital S. Now, in our cubo formulation, each day is divided into four shift. Hence, each shift or the duration of the each shift is six hours and denoted by small h in equation one. In this case, we assigned that each nurse can do maximum two shift in a day. That means total duration of work of each nurse is 12 hours. And this is also mentioned in equation one by small b. Now binary vector variable of our proposed cubo function q and s is belongs to 0 and 1. If the nurses are assigned for the shift s, then q and s is equals to 1. Otherwise, it will be 0, means scheduling process will not work. The gamma 
is a positive Lagrangian constant set by the programmer to tune the function more. For our second constant, we take two composite indices i and j as a function of the number of notches and shifts of matrix capital Q. Hence the cubo objective function for our uh, second constant that is at most two consecutive shifts is set for each team member and takes on the form of equation two. To minimize the cost function, equation two must be zero. Otherwise the cost constant C is set by the programmer to tune the objective function for most for getting the most optimal result. For our third constraint, we say total number of hours that each shift can have combining all the nurses working hours that are placed in the shift to be uh, a small a is equals to h into m where a m is the maximum number of members that can be present in each shift. Hence, cubo form of our constraint 3 is presented in equation 3. And the lambda is the positive Lagrange constant set by the programmer to tune the function more. The complete Hamiltonian of our not scheduling problem is expressed in equation four. And it is just the summation of the function h1, h2, and h3 as discussed in the last slides. For our physician scheduling problem, we use the same three constant and the objective function that we formulated for the NSP problem. For the case of PSP or physician scheduling problem, the upper limits and the number of shift per day may vary from the NSP problem. We take the number of physician to be small p which is belongs to one to capital P and the number of shift is assigned by small s which will be belongs to one to capital S. Our cubo formulation for PSP problem is expressed in equation five. In this slide, we will discuss about our another problem in PSP problem, NARS physician scheduling problem. In this problem, we assume a team of nurses and physicians working for a shift. The team consists of set of nurses and physician, that is small t and which is belongs to one to capital T. Again, we assume that last two members, that is T minus one and the T is the physician and the rest of all are the nurses. The number of working shift to be small s that will belongs to one to capital S. For our case, we have the four shift and each shift consists of h, small h, that means six hours to cover total 24 hours or a day. The binary variable where qts will be one if the member T is placed for the shift S. Otherwise, the binary variable will be zero. For our first constraint, we said the maximum number of shift each nurse and physician can do per day. Or by total hour, it should be 12 hour for nurse and doctor both. Hence, each nurse and physician can do at most two shift each day. Hence, our cubo for NPSP problem is described in equation six. Here we mentioned both user defined constant that is constant one and constant three. In our experiment purpose, we assumed that each nurse or physician can do maximum 12 shift in each week and maximum two nurses will be available at each shift for less crowding in the world. Taking these three constraints, we will simulate our model in simulated annealing, forward annealing, and reverse annealing 
process to find out a efficient roster and ground state energy. In the rest of the slides, our colleague Asmita Banerjee will discuss about the result and discussion of our project. Hello, my name is Ashmita Banerjee and I'll be speaking now. So we have used three kinds of processes for our algorithm. Firstly, we have used simulated annually. Secondly, forward annually. And thirdly, reverse annually. This is what reverse annually looks like in our case. The reverse annealing is nothing but starting from a classical state, going back, and through forward annealing, coming to a new classical state. It can also be defined as starting from a valley and then climbing up the hill and arriving at a new minima or valley. Now we'll talk about the results obtained from the Cuba model of a nurse scheduling problem. Now, each shift cannot have more than two nurses so that overcrowding can be prevented. Secondly, each nurse cannot do more than two shifts per day so that they do not get fatigued. Now these two hard constraints have been maintained and the Cuba model has been obtained and the results are given as follows. Now we can say that reverse annealing gives us the most satisfactory results out of all the processes. Now this was the nurse scheduling problem which included four nurses with 12 shifts. Now we'll switch to nurse and physician scheduling problem. Now this problem contains one doctor with three assigned nurses, which makes up two teams of each team consisting of one doctor and three nurses. Now we can again see that in case of reverse handling, the results are much better compared to simulated and forward handling. Next, we'll be comparing the results. Till now, we have implemented the nurse scheduling problem and the nurse physician scheduling problem. Now, the Cuba model has been implemented and we have seen that out of the three processes of simulated annealing, forward annealing, and reverse annealing, reverse annealing gives us the most satisfactory results. Now, we have implemented certain hard constraints and certain soft constraints. We have seen that the hard constraints completely satisfy. Now, the, your soft constraints can be user-defined. Also, for our case, we have given certain soft constraints. We have given a maximum number of consecutive days as a soft constraint. For that, we have set a high priority, a mid priority. High priority is of two and low priority or mid priority is of one. You can also, as a user, give such values. Now, we see again that reverse handling gives us better results for ground state energies. We used three kinds of handling processes for our algorithm. We defined certain hard constraints and certain soft constraints for our problem. We thank TWIV for the unlimited access they provided us during these hard times. Also, we hope that the frontline workers during these times will be benefited from what we have done. Having concluded this, I would like to mention Ikeda et al's paper, which was our main inspiration behind solving this problem. Also, I would again like to mention D-Wave for the unrestricted access they provided us and the exposure they provided us again to the COVID-19 research community.